Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning and I'm not going to lie. I'm on the major struggle bus. I mean, major struggle bus. But I haven't gone live in a while and I haven't done my full face in like forever. And I've had quite a few people ask, well, how long does it take for that product to dry? Or what are you, how much are you using? And so on and so forth. I'm like, all right, so I need to do a full face here. I need you to do, to do from start to finish so you all can see how long each product takes and how much of each product. I got it. Sorry, it's been a while. Okay, so I'm going to be using our hydrating primer today. And let me show you. It takes one full squirt okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pat it between my fingers and i'm going to pat it my face first now here is the trick with primer once i have it on you've got to let it dry it takes a few moments this is why i normally don't do my primer on screen because it takes about five minutes for it to fully dry so i have it on I like to pat it so that it kind of helps the pores a little more and it's supposed to help with fine lines. All right, so we're going to, you know, while I'm waiting for that to dry, make sure you say hi when you come on so that I know that you're here. Um, I, I'm excited. I used my commissions um, this week and uh, I ordered myself something extra cool for my vanity. So for those of you who don't, who, who know that I bought a house last year, know I also bought, you know, brand new furniture and all that kind of stuff. Well, I bought this beautiful vanity, but there's no make makeup mirror. And I've been using this for a makeup mirror. <laughs> um, and it just is not cutting it. It just does not do the, the job. I need something bigger. I need something better, brighter, you know, more, you know, more expansive. So um, my commissions last month were really nice. It was a cha-ching moment. And I decided I was going to splurge a little bit on me because I deserved it. So that's real exciting. Um, other than that, do you see how broke out my face is? Who else is stressing over this whole coronavirus? Who else is stressing and, you know, being frustrated? And when I get stressed and I, um, A, I just break out really bad. As you can see, I have, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Here, 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 um, here. I mean, I just, I break out really bad when I get stressed. And along with my cycle, which was a double whammy. Hey, it is what it is. So now I'm, you know, trying to get all of it to calm down. And I've been using my skincare like I normally would. Um, it's just stress is a nasty, nasty thing. And the coronavirus has everyone stressed. And I'm empathic. So um, when some people, when people are posting how, you know, that they're, that so-and-so, they lost their father-in-law to the coronavirus virus or you know that they just can't deal with life because of the coronavirus I take all of that in and my soul has been depleting and depleting and depleting and from like Thursday until yesterday I literally was on shutdown mode I could not deal with everything so I broke out I went into depression and uh, you know it's okay we're allowed to do that it's just how do you get back out you don't stay there um so I'm trying to come back around I'm trying to get back into the groove of things um get this face cleared up because holy smokes it's a mess. So I put on my primer. It's still a little damp. We want to make sure it's nice and dry. And if you just kind of tap your face, you can feel it kind of tacky. That's how you know it's a little, just still a little wet. So you want it completely dry before you start. Okay, so let's move on a little while we're waiting for that. Let's talk about the things I'm going to do today. Well, I'm going to be using this bad boy because I've had a lot of questions about this. So I want to tell you about this. Um, this is, it's supposed to create a, well, not supposed to, it does create an airbrush look. It, it creates the most flawless finish you have ever seen in your life. It's the most amazing foundation ever. And you don't spray it on your face. You spray it onto a brush and then you apply it. And because of the way you apply it, you can spray it onto your face, but it's going to be heavier and it's harder to move around. Spray it on the brush. It's easier. Um, but it dries super lightweight. You don't even know you have foundation on. I know people are, grapple with that. They're like, how is that even remotely possible? It is. You put it on and it's like having air on your face. You don't even know you have it on. You don't feel it. You don't, you know, it just creates this beautiful, gorgeous, flawless finish. So you look at me right now and you see all of these imperfections, all of this mess. We're all going to make, we're going to make them all go away in a few moments. Um, because of the way this is made, it cannot ship overnight, so it has to go regular mail. Sorry if you order. I've had a couple of people, why won't it let me ship two-day air? I'm like, it won't because of the fact of what it is. Uh, there, I mean, it's just because it's in a can. 
it is what it is. Um, like I said, super lightweight. It go when you put it on, it it covers everything. And I, I don't know how to explain. It, it creates a, a an airbrush look. You don't see it. And you see all these dark circles on my eyes. I did a mask picture yesterday. I don't know if you all saw my mask picture. And went in the mask picture. Mask picture that's a tongue twister all i could see was these horrible black circles under my eyes because i'm so tired i haven't been sleeping i've been stressing so watch how this covers this up okay so i think my face is pretty dry so you want to use a kabuki brush it makes all the difference in the world you can use a puff brush of some sort but a kabuki brush the flat dense stipple that's what you want you shake it up really she's saying hi everyone She's like, really, mom, you're live again. <laughs> okay, you shake it up really good. It does not take much. I need to glue my kabuki brush. I use it so much. See how short and sweet those bursts were? And you stay, start and you start stippling. Okay, so here's something I want you to see. When I first put it on, see how light it looks? See how it does not match the rest of my face? It's because it's meant to match down here. See, if you look, it matches down here. That is super, super important. And people do not realize that. They think they need to match whatever their skin color is up here. No, you want to match to your decolletage. You want to match to the lower neckline, okay? Not to the color on your face, not underneath your chin, not your forehead. This gets all the sun. So it's going to be different color than your neck. If you don't match to your decolletage, you have to bring your foundation all the way down into your neck, into your, your cleavage. That is horrible. No one wants to do that. So you match to down here. Always match your color to down there. So you can see it's a lighter shade than this over here. But do you see how all of a sudden all the zits over here are gone? Isn't that cool? That's what I love about this stuff. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, it just makes all the zits go poof. I had somebody said, you're 40, 40 something. Why are you still getting zits? Honey, I wish I knew. Distress. Look at that. The zit that's there, you can see the bump, but you can't see the color of it. The zit that's there, you can see the bump, but you can't see the color of it. The zit that's there, you can see the bump, but you really can't see the color of it. This stuff is amazing. So over here... See the, the discoloration in my skin? It's all gonna go away. The zits that were up along my eye line, all go away. See, you don't see the discoloration anymore. This stuff is amazing. It's so super lightweight. You don't even realize you have it on. It is so lightweight. It, it's non-clog, pore uh, cl uh, clogging, which is amazing. And there's a big fancy word for that. I just don't remember what it is. Notice how I take it down my neck some so that it matches my neck decolletage. And right now I look very, very ghostly because you're so used to seeing my face darker. And that's because of the fact that, you know, this, the, um, our face gets more sun than most places on our body, you know, on our um, upper body up here, this way up here. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you have it all on, see the dark circles under my eyes? So what I'm gonna do is see the residue around the spray? I'm gonna take and just do that edge. And every once in a while I have to spray a little bit more see the difference do y'all see the difference so i just sprayed just the edge i mean look at that i really don't even need concealer to hide the dark circles that is how amazing this foundation is it is literally the best thing ever um it's like I said, it's so lightweight on. It's so lightweight. You put it on and it just feels like there's nothing on your skin. It covers everything, which is amazing. It's not going to clog your pores. I mean, nothing. And everyone's saying, oh, but right now I'm stuck at home and I'm not going anywhere. Honey, when this whole end of the world stuff is over, we're going to be out and about like mad. And you need to be prepped and have all the right tools to an arsenal to get out there and enjoy the world when it's time. Otherwise you're going to be, Oh man, I wish I'd bought that. Now I don't have, now I have to wait to get it. 
But isn't that cool? You saw how broke out my face was. Now look at it. Insane. Okay, so that is the spray foundation and kabuki brush. By the way, the kabuki brush is on sale this month. Okay, so now that you have that done, you want to take the time. And some people like at least just a little bit of a dewy kind of finish. I don't care for a dewy kind of finish. For me, it looks like I just stepped out of the gym and working hard, which is great if I had, but it's misleading. So I take my setting powder. I shake it into the lid. Why? Because there's a trampoline there. See, it doesn't really go on the lid. I take a big puff brush. I load it up and I always start where my oiliest skin is. So my oily skin is my chin. And then I'm going to take and do a light finish over the rest. But you see how all of a sudden it's very soft. It's not dewy. It's very matte. It's a very nice, classy look. And I just realized I didn't put any concealer on at all. That's a bad thing. So let's go back and fix this concealer issue. We're not going to do much because I don't need to because I use the the, the, um, the spray foundation because it's just that awesome. So for concealer, I actually use our stick foundation. Our stick foundation is amazing. So any of you who do stage work, when it comes time to get back on stage and you need a lightweight foundation that isn't going to clog your pores, that does heavy duty work, the stick foundation is for you. Any kind of concealing you need to do, the stick foundation is for you. It's on sale this month too. Literally, I'm using just a little bit just to kind of finish off underneath my eyes. I actually, when I'm trying to do under my eyes, I go a shade lighter than my color. Not a lot, just a shade. Because it brightens the eyes. Okay, so see how I'm not doing a whole lot? Now what I want to do is I want to take my blending bud and some rose water. I dampen my blending bud. And I want to just tap where I put my um, concealer. Just a little bit. Now I'm going to take the same blending bud and I'm going to take my setting powder, which for some reason I put away. That's unusual for me. And I am going to get it damp. I mean, get it um, loaded with a little bit of setting powder and go underneath my eyes as well. And that creates that airbrush look. It finishes off the look. I'm telling you, this is, this is the steps. These are the steps you need to use. So you, now you have this beautiful airbrushed, canvas to start with gorgeous face now you just need to add color you need to pep it up like i said when this is this whole thing is over we're all going to be out in like droves trying to get you know enjoy the you know light and life again because we've been stuck at home for so long so since you know we're stuck at home take advantage of this time you know get up your stock of good you know makeup supplies learn how to do some new techniques Experiment a little bit so that when it's time, you can get out and have a lot of fun and you look amazing. I mean, this is the time to get it. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of blusher. I'm going to go in with the color Sweet. It is my go-to, everyday, non-stop wear color. I love Sweet. It is literally, like I said, it is my go-to color. It is great for any skin color tone there is. I don't care if you're light, dark, medium, or anything in between those. This is going to work. The reason it works is because our blushers are super pigmented. So here's the trick. If you have darker skin, so my beautiful chocolate ladies out there, you load your brush up and you put it on, you're going to see it. Okay, if you're pale like me, yeah, I know, I glow in the dark. It's okay. I own it. Um, you know, it's just literally a couple little taps. See how little's on there? And then I tap it on. See how little's going on? The more I tap, the more I put on. It is buildable, so I can literally go back and forth. Don't wipe, okay? Wiping doesn't really give you the effect you want. If you just kind of tap it on like this, you get a better effect. See the color? See how little I used? That is how amazing our blusher is. It takes so little if you're pale and even if you're darker it still is going to come out beautiful and you're still not going to require a ton of blusher because it's just one of those our blushers are just that amazing so 
Seth is doing his work right now. He should be starting his work right now. We've already had a meltdown this morning over it. So hopefully we are getting back on track. I told him, take an hour, take a break. I'm going to go live because, yeah, we already had a meltdown this morning over over science. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I'll be glad when this is all over and we're back into regular school. <laughs> Okay, okay, so you saw how little I use, and look how beautiful my cheeks are. It makes me come to life. It makes me look more alive. So the next thing we're going to use, I am super, super, super excited. So I get to offer this bad boy to you for 20% off, plus you get a spoolie brush, and on top of that, you get a free box as well, a gift box. So this bad boy is life for so many people. Y'all know I'm not a brow person, but we're going to do it anyhow. So this is the spoolie brush. It has one end is meant for applying the colors. The other end is meant for taming the brows because uh, many of us have wild brows. So here is the trick. When you are looking, when you comes to doing brows, when you are looking at your face, you place your brush on the corner of your nose in the corner of your eyes. So you want to line up here and here. Where it start ends for your brow is where you want to start your brow, okay? So then you take the corner of your nose and the outside corner of your eye, and where it ends is where you want your brow to end. Take the corner of your nose and the center of your eye, and that should be the peak of your brow. That should define where your brows end and start and peak. So those of you who are starting your brows way over here, because I've seen it, you might want to readjust a little bit because this gives you the grouchy look. This makes you look like you're pissed off at the world, <laughs> you know? Um, and I've seen people end their brows like right here. And I'm like, mm, it once again, giving you a shock look or, you know, or they're, they're peeking their brows. And I'm like, sit down, take a second and, and look through a couple of different ways of doing brows. So here is how I do brows. Um, now, my leader does it totally different. Everyone does it a little bit differently. I have to do what works for me, just like you have to find what works for you. So the way I do it is I start off with the brown, the light brown, and I take and I tap just the tip, okay? So I know where I need to start it. I place my brush there and I brush out, okay? That is what's going to create my first start okay so if you look i started just a little too early easy fix i've got concealer brush concealer brush concealer brush concealer brush easy fix so let's try that again so once again if i put my brush here i line it up should start right there and brush it out okay so that's where my brush my brow should start and you want the lightest color over here. Then I take my darker color, I tap it once again, and that's when I start drawing my line. And like I said, I am not a brow guru. I don't do brows, it is not my thing. I've never liked doing them, I've never been good at doing them. Um, I try to practice them on a regular basis. It's still not my thing. So it is what it is. But right now I know that so many women want to do their brows and they don't know how to do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can so relate. And you know, and you see all these things, brows matter because brows do matter. They matter a huge amount. I mean, you post pictures and if somebody doesn't have brows, it's like, whoa. Okay, so if by chance you don't like the shape, I always have a concealer brush. It still has my concealer on it from earlier. And this is what I use to straighten up my brows when I get out of line. Cause yeah, I get out of line real easy. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of brow work. Now, can you see the difference in my two brows? See how one, let me check because I think I went too far out. I did, I went way too far out. And 
And that's why another reason I keep a concealer brush loaded when I'm doing brows. So once again, corner should end right about there. All right, so can you see the difference? I don't do a heavy brow. I already have a fairly decent shaped brow. I have pretty decent coloring. I'm a little bit, you know, faded over here. So I use mine just to kind of help fill in a little bit. I don't go overboard. And I know a lot of people do really severe brows and that is a personal preference. You have to do what works for you. My heat just kicked on. It is not warm here. It's supposed to be a high of like 50 today and I'm like, really? You all just need to like, mother nature needs to take her pills and get on board. We were supposed to have snow last night. I'm like, no, 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 more no, more no. <laughs> I am not feeling this cold weather. I am, a, I am a spring girl and I live for spring and I live for the warmth of spring. So yeah, I'm not feeling this. Okay. So once you have your brows done, cause everyone's like, well, what do you use the other colors for? So the way I use them is I take this, this creamy color and you go up underneath your brow right through here. And this is highlighting. Now this is if I'm not doing any eyeshadow, I'm going to be using a little bit of eyeshadow. So it's going to kind of be a moot point. And I kind of highlight your brows a little bit more and the pink goes up along the top. Okay, so those, and then what is this for? This is a wax. So the wax, some people have eyebrows that kind of go every which direction. So what I do is I roll my brush in the wax and this helps keep your eyebrows laying flat. So if you have unruly eyebrows, that's gonna fix it. So this bad boy, hello, is a lifesaver for so many people. Let's do some eyeshadow now. The colors I'm gonna show you, these colors are so, so amazingly pretty. Okay, so we have the color Gentle, which is kind of a champagne shimmer or metallic. Then we have the color Slick, which is a rose metallic. Then we have Gifted, which is a, mm, I'm gonna say an aubergine metallic. And then we have Agile, which is kind of a, um plumish satin okay these four colors they're so pretty do you see how pretty they are these four colors are the colors in the kit right now aren't they amazing so you get these in the kit huh? hello you get those in the kit plus you get so many other amazing things so we are going to use those four colors today because i want you to see how to use them first thing you do Ladies, do not skip the eye primer. It makes a difference. It makes an enormous difference. Get it on the eye. Careful not to get it under the eye because it will make your foundation and concealer look all cracky-like. It's horrible, so you want to make sure you don't get it under the eye. But you want to get it anywhere you put eyeshadow. because it's gonna make that eyeshadow and pop and be gorgeous. Okay, so you put on the eye primer. It doesn't take near as long to dry as regular primer. In fact, it dries really, really quick. You gotta work fast. Then I use a little bit of our concealer. And our Skin Perfecting Concealer, it takes so little. See how much, how vibrant that concealer is as soon as I start putting it on? This is just helping your eyeshadows pop. We all want our eyeshadows to look in, uh, insane and amazing, you know, gorgeous in color. And our eyeshadows already do that because they're super pigmented, but I really, every once in a while, I want them to be extra, pim extra pigmented, extra, extra bold, extra, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm not, like I said, I'm on the struggle bus. I'm like, all right, I'm here, I'm doing this. Let's rock and roll with it. 
And you don't have to turn around, see how they're all splotchy. You don't have to take the time and do anything with it after this because you're going to put eyeshadow on top of it. So it's all good. I take my powder brush, the one that I use with setting powder on. It still has some res residual setting powder on it. Go across your eyelids. All this is going to do is make it so that when you start using your eyeshadow brushes, they don't skip across your eyelids because that makes a very unsavory look. So we are going to start with this color right here. And we are going to start with my fluffy crease brush. What you want to do is you want now, once again, as I always tell you, I always do eyeshadow for hooded lids. I have hooded lids and I know so many of you out there do and you don't know how to deal with it. So this is how you deal with a hooded lid. Um, and this is good for non hooded lids as well. So this is an overall doesn't matter look, but if you have hooded lids, this is great for you. You start in the corner of your eye. Okay. You want to get the heaviest of the color out on the corner of your eye because that's where you want all the drama. I then take it across my crease and I'll take it out to the corner of my brow, about maybe a third of the way over to my brow. Okay, so this is your initial color. See, not too heavy, not too light, just, and you can see it's skipped a little bit. That's what happens, it's even worse if you don't use um, setting powder over the, over the primer. So you start on the corner of your eye, get the majority of the color off your brush, and then you go back and forth in the crease. And then you take it out about a third of the way across your brow. And this is providing color at your brow. That's why it's so important when you have a hooded lid and you open your eyes, if you don't have color out up over here, no one knows you have color on. All right, so that's step one. Step two, you're gonna take your deluxe brush. Where is my deluxe brush? There's my deluxe brush. And we're gonna go across the lid and slick, which is this rose gold. All right, and this is just providing a little bit of shimmer and color, not really a lot of color. It's more of a nude rose. Just meant to add a little bit of shimmer on the top of your lid. You want more shimmer, pat it on. See how all of a sudden it has more shimmer than the other eye? Makes a difference. Okay, go back with your fluff brush or your fluffy crease brush and bring it over just a little bit on top of that. Now, yes, why did I not just do the, t uh, the top of the lid color first and then go in with the fluffy crease brush? Because I like to have the definitions laid out as to where I'm putting my colors. That's why I do it that way. All right, then we are going to go in with the crease brush. And we're going to go in with the color down here, Agile. It's darker color. And the idea is you want to do, see how much darker it is? Start on the corner of your eye. Like I always say, this is you you start where you with your brush, when you have a fully loaded brush, you start where you want the most bold of that color, okay? Because if you've overloaded your brush, it's going to go off there. If you know you're going to be putting it all the way over here and you want it to be more faded over here, and you start here, you're gonna have the majority of it there. So you start where you want the boldest of that color. Then once you have worked off a good portion of that color, then you can use what's residual on your brush to move it to the other areas where you want it. And that's why you always start where you want the boldest of those colors. Notice the difference between this eye and this eye. When you use that darker color out in the corner of your eye, it's creating dimension, it's creating a highlight. It's actually a contouring kind of effect. And what it does is it makes your eye pop, especially when you have a hooded lid. So when I open my eyes, you can see just very, very little at the top of my hood, at the top of my lid, right? But you see a little bit of pink out here and then you see this color over here. Over here you just see a little bit of pink and you see the top of my lid. So by adding this right there, it creates your eye to become more dynamic and pops it more. And that's why you wanna do that. I have a fluffy on my brush, that's why I keep getting a fluffy on my eye. 
Never happened in a house with two cats and a dog, right? Right. All right, a little bit of there. All right, we have one more color to use. But first I wanna go back in with my fluffy crease brush in the first color we used, and I want to pronounce it just a little bit more up over here. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm then gonna take my fluff brush, my fluff brush, okay? This is a great blending brush. The, the blending brush is great for you know getting all the other colors down. What I like to do is I like to take it with the lightest color I'm using, tap it on there, start in the corner, and bring it up to the brow. And this is going to A, blend all the colors down and then create that spark of, of shimmer across the top of my eyelid. And just like that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now let's talk about something else on our eyelids. So you see a lot of women who have these very set lines right through here. Okay, so here's how you wanna do it. And if you don't wanna take tape on your face, I get it. I don't like tape on my face. I'm allergic to most adhesive. So once again, this bad boy is one of my best tools in my arsenal. It is my concealer brush. It's technically a cream eyeshadow brush, but I use it as my concealer brush, okay? This bad boy, like I said, I have a tendency to have um, concealer on it because I've used it earlier. So I take it and draw it out, okay? And this is gonna give you that beautiful set line that you see so often with eyeshadow. If you need a more set line, put more concealer on it. It's all good. And you just keep wiping back and forth, not back and forth, just one direction. Pull it out. And it gives you that line that you're looking for. I will tell you after that, you wanna take whatever setting powder you have on your blending bread and just kind of tap that out a little bit. That way you have that look, because people are like, how do you get that without using tape? That's how you do it. But you have to have a very fine, flat brush. Okay, very, very important. Very dense, very flat. You want synthetic, it, what, it's what works the best. Okay, let's do a little eyeliner, right? Right, so I did all these pinks and purples. I don't want to do more purple on my eyelid. I think that would be a little bit of overkill. So I'm actually gonna go in with um, pewter. Get it going the right direction. Our dip and draws are the most amazing freaking eyeliner ever. Um, it is better than anything I've ever used. Up until this point, um, I used Almay and I hate Almay because it, every once in a while it would affect my eyes. Um, our dip and draws aren't going to affect your eyes the same way, but it, what's amazing about it is how easy they are to use. You have to shake them just like any pot kind of eyeliner there is. You have to shake them. And somewhere I have a, uh, hello, 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 where is it at? Seth, did you take my, my jar opener? What? My jar opener, the blue thing in here that I use to open jars and stuff. That's I upstairs. There should be one down in this drawer. <sighs> I can't get it open without it. I need it. What is it? It's my eyeliner. I can't get it open without it. I have to have it. All right, he got it. His hands weren't slippery. Okay, so every once in a while it gets... It, what happens is, if you can see up in here, I've gotten um, the dip and draw up in here, and it's gotten stuck in the jar. So I always keep a, a jar opener. Here is how you want to use this. When you shake it, shook it up really, really well, it's all over your brush on the tip. When you're doing the top of your lids, you want to take it out. You want to wipe off any excess that you can, okay? Fuzzy on there. So you wipe off all the excess. You use your fingers to guide or to, to balance, and you lay it across the top of your eyelid, eyelashes and draw. I am not gonna lie, it takes practice. 
I'm not going to lie, okay? So don't expect just the first, very first time, get a dip and draw. You've never done liquid eyeliner and have perfect eyeliner. If you do, oh my God, you're a goddess. Um, however, nine times out of ten, that's not the case. All right, so now that you have the top of your lid done, why is it being so st stubborn? Yeah, the top of your lid done, when you get ready to do your wing, you don't want to wipe off the excess. You want to have it fully loaded because most of us have teeny tiny little wrinkles in there. And if it's wiped off, you're going to lose it in those wrinkles. Another fuzzy. And because it's fully loaded, it makes drawing out that wing easier. All right, so let's do the left eye. Left eye is always my problem eye. You always have a dominant eye. And I get so jealous on these makeup artists. You need to watch these videos and they come on and they do both eyes so seamlessly. And I'm like, really? I, I, I have a hot mess. <laughs> So what I like about this color is because it's pewter, it's not black, it's not gray, it's not brown. It's just a nice accent to the, the pretty pinks and purples we used. And then we're going to use a little bit of purple on the bottom of the lid, and we're going to use black. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go in with your black, and the black goes in your waterline. This is called tight lining. You can do this on your top, top lid as well. And if you do it on your top lid, it makes your um, mascara look even more amazing. Another trick, if you want your in the if you're doing um, eyeliner in your waterline and you really want it to stay and be amazing, if you can do it, I cannot do it. Take a Q-tip and dry off your waterline. Sorry, I got a little bit of excess down too low. Take a Q-tip. Grab a Q-tip here and dry your waterline before you put on your eyeliner. I can't do that because it just affects my contacts really badly. Hey, Kristen, how are you today? All right, so we did black in the waterline. Now, because I want a little bit of color underneath my eyes, I'm going in with Purposeful, which is a metallic eggplant. It's one of my favorite. Obviously, it's one of my favorite eyeliners. I only have three eyeliners that are short, brown, black, <laughs> and eggplant. Is that sad or what? <laughs> You want to go up underneath your lashes for this one. And I love our eyeliners. They're so soft. They just go on so easy. Good. How are you are you doing okay with everything going on? You you staying at home safe? Everyone around you is all good. I mean, everyone, we all have our own battles with this, and I always have to worry about y'all. Okay, so our next step, what we're going to do now is obviously we have to do some lashes. And these bad boys are my go-to for everything. The only time I don't use this is like on the days when I'm literally doing my Walmart run. However, if I'm going to Aldi's because I'm putting on a mask, I'm doing both and I want my lashes to look amazing. <laughs> I know, it's it's sad. Mask wearing is, is, is the new norm. So let's talk about eye primer. What does it do? Um, well, A, it allows your lashes to look longer. Um, it, it conditions your lashes. It actually is helping the growth of your lashes. Um, it's actually priming your lashes just like it primes your skin. It's because it's a primer. It primes your lashes just like it primes your skin so that it's set, setting it up your mascara to be perfect on um, and not cut flake off, not or anything as, as anything that you know you don't want to happen. The way you want to do it, don't ever pump your your wand you want to swirl it around okay don't swirl it too hard i have been known to break a wand or two <laughs> swirl it around i do two coats i have super oily eyelashes so i start with the top of my lids 
and then I do the bottom of my lids. You can do your bottom lashes if you want. I do not. See how you can barely see anything on? It's because I have oily lashes. So I use one coat to set it up. And then it doesn't take long for it to start getting tacky. So I take that, my second coat. Now I only do the bottom of my lashes. And see all of a sudden they look white and they look longer. It's because it's helping those lashes be more accepting. All right, let's do the other eye. Now I'm also going to take my lash brush and comb out my lashes so that they're perfect for my mascara. Oh my gosh, the allergies have been insane. And with the lupus, anything that I, any of my hair that when I get, um, it, it, like when I rub my eyes or whatever, um, they just, I lose my lashes. So I've lost like half my lashes again. I'm like, oh, so I'm back to using my lash serum on a regular basis twice a day. Okay, so I've brushed my lashes, I've cut my lashes. So now I'm gonna do my 40. Once again, don't pump, swirl, pull it out slowly. Get off all the excess off the ends. Start at the base, wiggle back and forth and up. And I'm gonna tell you, if you really want your lashes to look amazing, you are going to want to do two coats, one and a half coats, uh, depending on how you wanna look at it. So I always start with my first coat. Go do my next eye. That's good, Kristen. Stay safe. Make sure you stay in, away from, you know, everything. And we'll get through this. We'll all get pull through this. And we'll come back fighting. And we'll all want to be out and about and having fun and living life when this is all done. Let me tell you, I'm ready already. And I'm a homebody. <laughs> all right. So first coat is done. Once again, can you see what I just did? <laughs> Who else does that? They go to put the wand back in and you go down your finger. Please tell me I'm not alone in that because I do it all the time. I'm going to comb my lashes again. This is what separates your lashes out so you don't have those tarantula looking eyelashes. You, you know, nothing worse than having clumpy tarantula looking eyelashes. And our lash comb is hands down the best lash comb I have ever owned. Those times are just the most amazing thing ever. Just amazing. And yes, I clean it off after every time I use it. Now we're going to go back in. Remember I told you one and a half coats, not really two. So what you want to do for your second coat is you want to go not quite all the way down at the base, but like halfway, and then twirl it up on your tips. This is what really helps your tips look amazing. I mean, like instant growth. I mean, look at that. Do you see how gorgeous that is? Hello. Insane lashes. I have no lashes over here, by the way. Like I said, uh, allergies are a kicker for me. Okay, I'm also gonna go in and do my bottom. Normally my left eye has lashes longer than my right. Not necessarily right now. Love allergies. <laughs> If you feel, when you put it on, if you feel like they're still clumped up or too close together, take the time and use your lash comb. That's what you have it for. Uh, it's, and if you don't have one, please let me know and I will help you get one because it makes all the difference in the world. So the reason these look clumped right here is because I have no lashes from here over, none. Um, I had really, really, really bad aller allergies and I lost, when I started rubbing my eyes, I lost a lot of 
uh, lashes, unfortunately. Yeah, it is what it is. Okay, last thing to do. The absolute last thing we do is gotta do some lips. Can't go out like this. Uh-uh. All right, so I want to do a more casual lip. I don't want to do an in-your-face lip. So I'm going to start off, and I'm going to use, I know you're probably sick of me hearing me use it, but I'm going to use Contrite. First thing, line your lips. Then, y'all know Contrite is my color. Another tool you need to, okay, so th the three tools I'm going to tell you that you need to have in your arsenal above all other, anything else, okay? You need to have a good concealer brush. You need to have an eyelash comb that has tines like this, and you need to have a lip brush. If you do not have these three items, let me know so we can get you fixed because those are the tools that are going to make all the difference in the world. I literally can put on foundation with my fingers if I have to. I can do eyeshadow with my fingers if I have to. Um, but those items, I really, I have to have. So this is a powder. I had somebody say, well, is that, what is it? Do you have to mix it with something? It's a powder. Can you see it moving around in there? It is a powder. When you pull it out on the wand, it's still kind of powdery. So if I do this, see the powder come down off of it? But as soon as I start doing this, those beadlets of powder form together to create a cream and they go on creamy it's so awesome it's magic and what I love about this is this lipstick stays on forever I mean it is the, the best thing ever I, I love our powder lipstick when it first came out I was real real hesitant I kept thinking I don't know about this and I got the special trio that they brought it out and I'm like I'm not sure about these and the trio that they first brought out were all matte finishes and I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, we have the splash, blah, blah, blah. And then they brought out some of the metallics. So this is a, has a little bit of a metallic to it. And this is contrite. And I was like, oh my gosh, put it on. I loved how it felt on. I loved how it stayed on. I love that it gave a little bit of metallic. I literally use this color all of the time. This is one of my favorite colors. So, ta-da. And you don't do anything with it afterwards. It's on. It's on for good. So this is today's look. I wanted to show you start to finish. I wanted to show you how much it takes of certain things, what products to use with what tools, um, you know, what's going to give you the give you the best finish with this. I wanted to show you all of these things because I've had so many people recently send me a message and say, okay, I got the primer. I don't know what to do with it. Okay, so then I have to send them a little video. This is how you apply it, da 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 da, and then I'll they'll, then they'll send me a message. Okay, well now I got this foundation. What do I do with it? So I decided, all right, start to finish. Now, did I use all our foundations? No, I used one foundation. I used two technically, um, but I showed you how to use that foundation. Um, you know, I showed you how to put on the eyeshadows. Uh, next week I'll do another full face, and I will show you how to put on. The liquid eyeshadows which are so freaking amazing i love the colors of them um so just keep that in mind i'll try to do something new every week to try to give you more insight on how to apply your makeup start to finish because like i said when this is all over and we're going to be want to get back out in full force we're going to want to be out going out at night going to dinner sitting in a restaurant going and hanging out with friends at a winery going to festivals we are going to want to be made up we are going to want to be pretty we are going to want to have a flawless face flawless face did you all see all the zits when I first started this? Hello? I mean, look at this. Did you see all the zits? <laughs> uh, I love, like I said, I love our spray foundation. Okay, so next week I will come on and I will show you how to do. I am, Dwayne, I am. How are you, babe? I saw your little one. What's up with that? Hello? Um, my little one is not so little. Seth, come here. Seth. He's not so little. Come down where they can see you. Come down where they can see you. <laughs> not so little. <laughs> so, um, and, and Dwayne, just so you know, I bought a house. 
Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, you need to send me a message. Let me know how things are going. So, no, not not gay doing. Another doing. So come over one day. Yeah, he does. I agree. Okay, so everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I will join you all again tomorrow. Fingers crossed, things will be back to normal. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them below. Like I said, I am here for you anytime. Live, lash, love, and savagelashes.com. Bye.